Now, when I talk about my industry, I'm talking about both printing and packaging, so my figures don't compare with Kip's. I was looking at his figure for the whole of Africa of 5.5 billion US dollars, and I can tell you that my members alone uh, contribute 6.9 billion dollars to uh, of South Africa's GDP. So we're producing in printing and packaging more than what the, the figures uh, that you paid a lot of money to Pyra for are showing you. It's possibly a slightly bigger market than, than, than what we think. However, we're a small country with a population of less than 45 million people, and the printing industry employs less than 70,000 people. My industry is the sixth largest industry uh, in our country measured in terms of contribution to GDP. Our currency, the RAND, uh, floats against the US dollar and currently our exchange rate is about 7.5, 7 rand 50 uh, to 8 rand to, to the dollar. It, uh, it, does, it does change. Although South Africa is small when compared to the large economies of Asia, Europe and North America, it is, and I'm sorry to say this to my Nigerian friends, uh, it is the most developed country in Africa in my view and has a very sophisticated banking system. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Nigerian banking system uh, because I know that there are one or two problems there uh, just currently at the moment. <laughs> However, uh, when from Africa we can, we can joke with each other. Our banking sector has been ranked 15th in the world by the OECD. And as a country, it is classified as obviously one of uh, the global emerging markets. This morning, most of us are from either the Middle East or Africa. But each of us are an interconnected part of the global economic mechanism. We all live in a far more complex environment than has previously existed in the history of this planet. The political, economic, social and environmental challenges facing us are unprecedented and there is relatively little in history that we can learn from. Our parents and grandparents knew nothing of global environmental change. They knew nothing of instant global communication or mass recreational or business migration or a world populated by approximately or nearly 7 billion people. With the so-called Iron Curtain now becoming a distant memory for, for all of us, and the European Union now compromising 27 different countries, we live in a very different world from that which into where most of us were born into. A world in which the term globalization is seen either as an opportunity or a threat, depending on your point of view. From an economic perspective, Globalization describes the ongoing process by which national economies become integrated into the international economy through trade, foreign direct investment, capital flows, migration, and the spread of technology. There are four main economic flows that characterize globalization. Firstly, the flow of goods and services. As business people and entrepreneurs, we tend to welcome the opportunity to export into foreign markets and resent others exporting into our domestic markets. But those are two sides of the same coin. We all want to export, but we don't want people to come and import into our countries. Secondly, the flow of labor and people. As labor opportunities disappear in some countries and industries and reappear in others. I think Dubai is a, is a very good example of that. There are, so, there are very many people working in Dubai that are not from that particular country, uh, and particularly from the Indian subcontinent and, and uh, other parts of Asia. Thirdly, the flow of capital, either in the form of fixed direct investment, which all of us want, or in the form of temporary money market investments in high interest economies. In, in a country like South Africa, uh, international countries come and park money overnight 
because of relatively high interest rates uh, and take it out the next. So what we're looking for is uh, fixed investment rather than just parking money overnight. And finally, the flow of technology. This is particularly relevant in the printing and packaging industries, where the vast majority of our technology is designed and produced in the United States, Germany, or Japan. If this wasn't so, we wouldn't be here visiting Print09 in Chicago this year. In the developed economies, rising labor costs and the development of increasingly powerful microprocessors over the two, last two decades has led to highly automated presses and peripheral equipment. This technology is almost universally available. So whether you're printing it in a company in Cape Town, or in Chicago, or Lagos, or Kuwait, uh, or even Dubai, you're likely to be using exactly the same technology. Globalization has affected every economy in the world, with the possible exception of North Korea. And the integration of the world's economies has meant that the financial tsunami that started a year ago here in the United States has also affected everybody in this room. By April this year, South Africa had already lost 130,000 jobs since September 2008. And the forecast is that we will lose a further 300,000 jobs by the end of this year. These losses are across all sectors of the economy. But as the printing and packaging industries are all interdependent on these other sectors, we are also being directly affected. This, of course, is more significant because South Africa has an unemployment rate in excess of 27%. And that's the official rate. I can tell you the unofficial rate is far higher than that. And mass migration from countries to the north of South Africa has exacerbated the unemployment situation. When I, ladies and gentlemen, this might not be of particular interest to you, but just as an anecdote, we have in our country, I can hear French being spoken almost more frequently than I can hear Zulu being spoken uh, in some areas. And that's because there are a lot of people from the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo uh, coming down into, into South Africa. Um, there are large communities of, Af of uh, people from different countries, very highly educated people who have left their own countries, come down to South Africa thinking that it was going to give them an opportunity to work, and now we have uh, people guarding motor cars in car lots uh, with tertiary education. It's a, it's a serious problem. It's a serious problem. South Africa has a thriving magazine and newspaper market, and about 99% of our paper, board, and flexible packaging are produced lo locally. With the exception of scholastic books, however, most books are imported. There are no import duties levied on imported printed products, products into South Africa. Particularly in the packaging market, many customers are, are global brand names with massive purchasing power and the ability to source packaging from China or Brazil or anywhere else. They are global corporate citizens whose actions are subject to scrutiny by stakeholders in virtually every country in which they operate and who are able to compare the quality, price, and service they receive from suppliers in different countries. This means that South African printers and converters have to be globally competitive in terms of quality, price, environmental friendliness, and recyclability. To do this, amongst other things, total labor costs have to be kept low. The number of people employed in our industry has halved over the last 15 years while output has increased in line or slightly ahead of our country's GDP.